Welcome to episode 59.5. Ah, shit lips. You thought it was episode 60. Not yet. Ah, uh-huh. not yet, bitch. Not We today. got these things planned, and by that I mean we're going to cover testing characters and then the main roster in episode 60. How about that? Fuck yeah. In the meantime, we've got, we got a special, we, we've cooked up a special little bonus episode 59.5 with you. So named because we got the same guest, Buddy Tebow. Go ahead and say hi. Hey, I've been in a point five twice now. Have you? Yeah, I guess you have. Uh, <laughs> and also, Namasp, who just got done carving this country up a little bit for himself. True. He, he can you know, buy it's out good both to own- of our entire estates without even batting an eye. It's good to own land. What can one say? Indeed, it always has been. <laughs> Masp, I don't believe in the concept of land ownership. I think I think geolibertarianism is a fair approach, and Georgianism is accurate as well. Anyway, of course, if you step into my domain, you'll be violating the NAP. It's true. The NAP is, you know, snippity snappity. You violate the nappity. If you violate the nap, you'll be taking a nap. Your pronouns will become or was, as they say. <laughs> Those are verbs. <clears throat> not not if you transition into unlife. These are some modern day threats. Ah, this is this is not the this is not the spicy April Fools Q and A. <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's not. Anyway, as you as you may have guessed by the uh, episode fifty nine's title, posthumous recording. I was pissed that Craig uh, kept dying and Namasp had to leave last time. So we, I wanted to to clean up the the uh, last couple testing additions because I feel like I felt like we could have done it. So we're going to clean up our, our agenda from the, uh, last time. And then to fill out probably about an hour, we will go ahead and cover some recent, very positive changes to the character editor and the, and the game in general, including characters, metadata and some epilogue stuff. And uh, do a little bonus Q and a, we'll see how many we get through, but uh, we got a decent number of questions here. Mostly Spinati related, no abortion this time. No, <laughs> no, nothing. No, no gasoline, no states' rights. Everyone loves federalism when it's their turn to. Have Speaking states of federalism, rights. let's talk about our, our most American Spinati character from Poke America. I, I wanted to go into a, a big rant about this last time, and it pissed me off that I didn't get the chance. But really, like, okay, last cast's agenda, if I can find it, right? I've bitched about this so many times. We had a character called Hilda, obviously the one from fucking Fire Emblem. We had a Pokemon character, another one, another Pokemon protagonist, which we'll get to later. And we have a a Gen 5 Pokemon protagonist from Black and White. Now, you would think with all of those things converging, surely this would be the fucking bang-on booty shorts girl we all know and love. Hilda. It's not. It's fucking Hilbert. Wow. It's, it's the male character from, from Black and White. Which, to be fair, I'd still say is like the best uh, male protagonist design, just because it's, it's largely inoffensive. I don't know what the fuck is up with like Nate's palm tree hair or whatever. Or any, any of the other shit they got going on. He just seems like a not real stand-up guy. He just seems reliable. He looks like a dude that'd be named Hilbert. Take that as you will. Hilbert is a terrible fucking name. I don't know what they were thinking with any of these things. <laughs> Can you think of a less American name? I think there's quite a few. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. I, I found a uh, I found a gif of him from, from like the Gotcha, the the Pokemon Master Sex. What? You, you know about Pokemon Master Sex? No, I don't. <sighs> Pokemon Masters EX. That's the joke. Ah, uh, ah, uh, well, I did not. Hashtags, you see, don't have spaces or, or capitals. So. Uh, Actually, do they have capital letters? I guess they could. It's all capitals. Listen, I don't go on Twitter, and I consider myself very much better for it. Twitter is the scum of the earth. I just use it for porn. Even listen, then. I use Spinati for porn. I, I, I listen. I went into a big rant about social media and its ills last time. I don't think we need to retread that. 
Buddy Tebow, what do you think about uh, Hilbert and his portrayal in Strip Poker Night at the Inventory? Are you aware that this is what this podcast is about? <laughs> yeah, um, so we did have that uh, little... From a new writer, by the way. Had. Hmm? From a new writer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a new writer. Um, so, so like, like I said, we did do the uh, little lightning round thing with me on the first, on the last episode. Yeah. So my my thoughts are kind of there, but to just go a bit more in on it, um, like I said, the, I don't know anything about Pokemon really. The only Pokemon game I've played is Pokemon Black, and I didn't even beat the whole game. I got to the Ferris wheel fight with N, and then like that's the farthest I remember from the game. So like. My actual Pokemon knowledge is slim, and the fact that I keep getting cursed with having to cover Pokemon characters on these on this podcast is something that always makes me laugh. I One remember that. I actually noticed it, 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 it was it was one of the things that really entrenched to me uh, replaying it that the, this this all, all this simping for N and like shipping him with the main characters is 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 totally phony. Like this dude is a creepy ass stalker. I just remember the fight was actually genuinely hard, and that's what kind of why that's the last thing I remember. Well, there, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good Pokemon to pick, and then there's a lot of ones that are complete ass. So yeah, and I didn't know that because, like I said, didn't play it much. But you, um, you could end up pretty underpowered. <laughs> um, one thing, and it's the main thing my eye always I always looks at when uh there's a new character is the posing because posing, especially with more expressive eccentric characters, is like one of my favorite things to do when I'm working on Spinetti stuff. Uh, Misfortune is a prime example of that. Uh, so when I looked through Hilbert's after playing game with him, I was really happy with a lot of the posing. Um, I had them on hand last episode, but I don't right now, but they just, you could tell what each expression was. Um, you could tell what it was trying to convey and it was just very, very out there in a way that I was, that I enjoy without being like, not like without being out of character. Like I could see it fitting how he talked and everything. Um, model wise, the only th- complaint I have, and I didn't notice it until the hat came off, is he has quite the forehead. Not quite five head, I'd say like four point four head. Uh, it kind of looks like he's balding a bit, but yeah, I'm assuming he's not that old <laughs> that he would be balding. You, you don't have to be old to be balding. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend who's. <laughs> I have a friend who's stuck with that poor life. Overall, though, the the model, yeah, I do like the model other than that. And then the clothes, I mean, talking, like, dialogue-wise, he has the classic problem of lore dumping. Uh, specifically in his, um, his self-strip and all that, he does lore dump a little bit. And I noticed uh, right after, like, I had a round where he lore dumped, he instantly started talking about like the clothing he was wearing, but not in too interesting a way. So like he did the the new the newcomer combo of tr- uh, Lord Dump into clothing talk. Like it, it's a bit rough, but I mean I understand where people make the oops at first with it. So like if you can just clean those up a bit, get rid of, uh, shave a bit of that forehead off, I think he could do, he could go pretty far, especially for a male character. I'd like to chime in here and, and say that um, based on conversations I've had with the writer, it's very clear that they have they have a lot of like they they have a lot of like personal lore for like where they envision him going after the the game ends, which yeah, I, mostly is him as being like part of Interpol and uh, and traveling all throughout the other regions. Which it's fine to talk about those about all those things, but yeah, it's it's hard to establish all of that. Um, in in a, in a limited format like this, and then sometimes you end up with uh, what's known as the head cannon rabbit hole, which I talked about in the dialogue guide that I wrote. But it gets to the point where you end up writing so much about that, then suddenly that's what the whole character is, and it has it has nothing to do with <laughs> the actual game he's from <laughs> that people would remember, and you're just left with your own story that you came up with. So you have to be able to balance it. Anyway, Namasp, uh, mega Pokemon fan that you are. Yeah, I fucking love Pokemon, but favorite franchise. Um, I mean, they personal, do, it, it has like, made a lot of money. You can relate to that. Jesus. But my 
big commentary on the model is like the hips are a little too wide. He has a very much like a bowling ball shape that might be worth considering evaluating. Um, you mean bowling pin? What did I say? Bowling ball. <laughs> I was very uh, yeah. confused about that too. <laughs> yeah, bowling pin. Sorry, English is English is hard. Um, maybe, maybe his ass is like a bowling is like a bowling ball because you know maybe um, nice oh, and round. Oh, and there's a there's I, a hole. I really I actually really like Hilbert. Like I don't find him like sexually attractive. But that's okay. Like I think he's like a fun character. I think the big thing that's maybe missing on him is like outbound targeted lines. And I know that's like not a huge critique because it's like, well, you know, he's very clearly responded to a lot of situations, which is excellent. And he's responded to the Pokemon characters, which is, again, excellent. But I think, you know, it doesn't hurt to target things outside of your immediate wheelhouse if you like those characters. I, I think like that's like the most flattering thing is when like someone targets my characters that I I don't really know what the character is about because then I'm like okay this gets me invested to like make modifications and consider what they're doing. Overall though, you know, Pokemon character, you know, you're kind of working from scratch and kind of is like here's the thing about Pokemon characters, right? We all roughly understand what Pokemon is. If you're going to write a Pokemon character, you're basically putting your own writing finesse on the line, which is a challenging dis- decision to make. Because on the one hand, like if you're a really good writer, you probably don't need to use a character that's a blank slate. On the other hand, if you're a less talented writer, there's not really a lot for you to lean back on. And that's kind of the extent of my feelings about Hilbert. Like, I think he's good. Like, I like the way he's written. I think the dialogue is snappy and good. I think he's clever and interesting and doesn't overlap with the characters in the game. He reminds me a lot of Xander, but kind of like blown up. So um, whoever's writing Xander, if you're listening to this, like Hilbert's a great and starting place. And someone actually is writing Xander right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, <laughs> they actually are. Hashtag not a meme. Hashtag serious. God, that Xander model is still insane, that new one. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. Good stuff. Like, like over, overall, very, very positive. Yeah, there are quite a few encouraging things I've seen from, from Hilbert and his creative team, such as model updates. Uh, they've been encouragingly quick on like addre- addressing issues with his model. Like, there's, this is, he's already on his third model. Personally, I think the second one was the best so far. This one has the best detail and looks pretty good when he's clothed. But he's got like massive hips to the point where it's really a, like a female body shape, which I guess some guys could have, but it's really extreme with him. Like at a glance, I'd be like, that's a chick. And it's uh, it's it's distracting. I don't know if this is like a common fan and thing with the character that he's got a big ass. Some guys have a big ass. You know, it happens. But like. From what I've seen, it is kind of common. We're not going to delve on that much. Well, if we're assuming he's the he's the gender flipped version of Hilda, I guess it's fair. Yeah, instead of reversing where he's stacked, they just kept it. Oh boy, isn't that a power? Cu- isn't that a power couple? Like they just show up and like both of them have just like the best asses in the room. <laughs> you just hear like simultaneous two claps at the same time as they walk. Hard <laughs> off. Oh god. Um well let's see here. I mean if you're gonna go if you're gonna go for that, I'd still say tone it down a little visually, but you could make that like a thing sexually. I mean you might as well remember what game we're playing. Um and there like okay, writing wise, there are like reasonable changes to like his premise here, re- you know, reasonable lore that he came up with. I don't think anything's too egregious, which is why I didn't have a huge problem with it. I just think you should incorporate more from the actual canon game so you don't stray too far from the from the proven path and yeah i agree there was a boring lore dump that he had uh, on on the stripping kind of break that up into into more digestible pieces He's, he seemed a little overly embarrassed in places um i don't know if, if he's just kind of like supposed to be like a meek sort of guy you know not not too forward in these types of things 
that's maybe something to hammer out. I think he could have used a bit more sexuality in general. One thing that I thought was really nice is that apparently he has like a crush on Hilda because you know she's the she's the freaky chick that he he met in the on the subway. Kind of like that, you know. Get into that a little bit. Those those them Bianca hips. I don't know if either of you have any clue who Bianca is. If you remember, she's she's got she's got some junk in the trunk. Just I know the name. I I, I, can, I I know the name. I can't see the face. I, I can I played, post it a little played, bit later. I played Pokemon Gold and Silver, and that was my last exposure to the entire game series. Oh, that's fine though, because that 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 has Claire, who's best girl. Who? <laughs> Do you remember anything from Gold and Silver? No. Oh, there you go. Because I was like, I was, I was like, <laughs> like I don't know. I, I was not very old when I played Gold and Silver. Let's put it that way. Do you do you remember Pika Blue? Do you remember What's the Pika Blue? Gods? Mew three. What? <laughs> could you Are could you, you read like... English when you when you played Gold and Silver? <laughs> when when was Gold and Silver? This was like two thousand two thousand one something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I I vehemently did not understand English at that point. And I certainly <laughs> didn't understand Japanese. So. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I love that. I love that the art. has Claire. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Only other thing I want to say about the art is that sometimes his uh, his words and face don't match. That's uh, trouble you can run into when you're when you get too extreme with your posing. Sometimes, like he uses this pose a lot, which <laughs> it's pretty extreme in terms of like what kind of thought process he's conveying here and he uses it for everything even like really mundane thoughts or like confronting somebody else about something that's confusing oh yeah it appears he was unaware of, i'm sorry these notes are pretty old because we needed to record this sooner he was un- unaware of the masturbation rule apparently which i mean i'm yeah uh, let he who's without sin uh make the first jerk but is that fixed now? Because, like you said, this is from a bit back. It may be. That's the same problem with my nose. Oh yeah, one 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 funny thing I wrote about him. He's he's a bit bland right now, and not only does he have a bit of a female body, but I I wrote about his writing. He he could be a girl, basically. He's 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 not written poorly, but he's written a lot like the other Poke Girls. I think all the other Pokemon protagonists in this game are female, and he could very easily also be a girl. In terms I think of that might play. also. I think that might just be because, like you said, a lot of the other pokey pro tags we've had, they're all girls. So, like, well, they're, they're going to be like kind of comparable. He's just kind of like generically nice, and he doesn't really. I don't know. He he doesn't really hit on anybody or like have anything particular that he's really into. He's just happy to be here. Yeah, you know, you, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there a little bit. As a guy, you know, you could take some advice from Leon. Well, what what advice is there for Leon to give, really? <laughs> Stay away from zombies, but fuck zombies. <laughs> Don't. No, when, he when says a, when, a, when, a, when when big burlap man comes at you with a chainsaw duck. His fucking advice is fuck zombies and fuck zombies. Well, uh, only if they're. I mean, soccer is really cute. Like, I th- I think it makes it very easy. To make life decisions around that. Anyway, <laughs> hold on. I need to find a, a fucking gif of of Bianca. And of course, they're all from the anime, but it, it should work out enough. It, she's basically on model. There she is. Okay, yeah, that is that, that's who I thought it was. I knew they had. I knew they were blonde. She's like your she's like your childhood friend in the game. Uh okay. Is she like the Gary equivalent? Well, she well she's much nicer. Ah. Uh. But but yes, the the Gary equivalent is is really um and the the pretty boy, the the yeah. creepy stalker slash cult leader. <laughs> Namasp, have you ever taken Napsu on a Ferris wheel? Yeah, why? <laughs> Did have you ever like sidled up real close to her and look her in the eye and say, "I'm I'm the king of a cult." No, I I will admit that's that is terrorized that is that has terrorized the local area. Do you think that would have gone over well? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no. All right, moving on. 
Speaking of cults and, and religiosity, I'm buying, I'm buying naps corn dogs right now. We're 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 cooking up something fierce. It's her. She's finally here. Arugula. <laughs> Arugula. Arushale. That's how you say it, right? I think. I always said it Arushale. Like, just a bit of, like, different uh, focus on the... Fun fact, this, is, this will be one of the things we'll talk about in the, in the character editor changes, because we finally added a pronunciation field. I so probably Yeah, I was about to ask if... <laughs> About to ask if hers was filled. <laughs> yeah, so you should probably fill that in in terms of how to say your fucking name. But it's, it's Arushele. Arushele. I think so. I might be way off, but that's just always how I've pronounced it. Arushele. A succubus from Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous, which I think is some kind of RPG or real-time strategy game. It's, or... like, it's like an RPG. Have you played it? I have played the tabletop version of it. I have not played the video game version of it. All right. So she was a heretic demon. And she, so she's like a succubus. She killed people. She tortured them. And then uh, at some point she had a change of heart. She, she went through some shit and, and, she, and she defected. She changed her whole allegiance. And now she fights against demons. But, so apparently she's here to prove that she can, she can still suck cock and, and have a good time oh and God. not be evil. Sounds this is about by, right. This is by Cool Cat, the creator of Jim Rayner and uh, the Samus rework. And, and I think he's got some other projects, right? Or is that what he's been focusing on? Um, I can't think of any others. Those are the big ones. I mean, he was on uh, Colt, but Colt's offline right now. That's right. That's right. Buddy Tebow, you gave Arushale a try, right? What do you think of her? Um, so, like, the, the first thing I like to point out is sh- I, it, I was reminded of it after you, like, went over her little, like, quick summarized backstory. Her and Ari literally went through, like, almost the exact same, like, plot points of their life. They were both, uh, like, yeah. kind of more primal sucky by. Got a bit of a change of heart. The only difference was she went full wholesome, like, respectable, happy housewife type deal with a bit of lewdness. Ari kept the lewd nature, but kept it toned down a bit, but she kept it and still kind of ran with it, still flirtatious. So it's kind of funny seeing how, like, same paths still can diverge in different ways. Um, this, this was another reason that I really wanted to finish the agenda last time, so we could directly compare these two, Ari and, and Arushalai. Yeah. Um, former, former, former succubi. Yeah. One, one being, one being like, "Hey, you know, it's not, it's not evil to suck cocks," and it, another being like, "Hey, I could uh, manipulate people and suck as much cock as I want." <laughs> and to add on to that, that makes it so funny. Ari, in at least when it comes to the forfeit, is it, pretty tame. I mean, there will be some changes to that later. But with her Shayla, she not only has a wound tattoo. Like a lot of the elements of the debaucher succubus during the forfeit and all that, she also has a tail forfeit, which is like she her forfeit is so much more debaucherous than Ari's, despite being the more wholesome one. And that makes me laugh so fucking hard when I think about it. <laughs> um, on actual character though, she's very uh, enjoyable. She she almost is like a. Uh, <laughs> like a motherly figure to the inventory in a sense, like one of the additions to the motherly figures, which I can't really list off the top of my head thinking was. Um, well, she really makes her presence known, doesn't her, Doesn't she? I mean, just look at those, those, those big, powerful wings. The Ridley wings. <laughs> taking up three fucking character spaces at <laughs> full span. If I remember correctly, someone after like after she came out, someone like chose the four biggest characters they could think of, which was like there was her, there was Mega Mix, there was I think they included Wario, and I don't remember who the fourth option was. It might have been Ari, no, because she only has all the tails in her first pose. But um, like yeah, she she is massive to the fact that I remember when she came out, they had to tone a lot down, like they had to move her back. I think they even shrunk the wings a little bit. But the biggest thing was like making sure she was behind everything. 
but yeah, like it, I've it's been a while since we had a full wholesome character. Well, not really full wholesome, but more on the wholesome end of things. Uh, but like, it's not so much to the point that it gets awkward when she ends up in a lewd nature. Like, it, it's a good like they segue really well. It's a smooth transition from one side of the coin to the other. Overall, though, like the art's really good. I believe was this another phone box model? I think it's phone box model. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, Although I think it, they're considering doing some uh, revisions. A couple I know, things aren't landing, at least for me anyway. Not, yeah. not that she looks bad. Well, I mean, like one one thing you can notice in the uh, sprite you posted is the uh, like the the shoulder plates are a bit stiff, which that's not entirely on them because Twisted Fate. His there's a reason he strips the coat first because I hated working with those shoulder pl- pads. Um, and armor in general. How do you think and, I feel with Maya's fucking pauldrons? Exactly. She, like, puts her arms through. Exactly. Like, that's where shoulder pieces become so difficult to work with. Um, and, and just armor in general is rough, so, like, the fact that it even looks like it does now is pretty good. But, yeah, like, a phone box model when it shows, cool cat writing and it shows. Uh, I know someone pointed out there were a few lines that he kind of went back to, like, when he wrote Samus and Cool Cat, but I think... Uh, yes, he wrote Cool Cat. Jim, sorry, I see them as the same people sometimes. Uh, uh, when, when he used to write them, some of those lines managed to, do, managed to slip their way into the woodwork, but I get how that happens when you write start writing more characters, your mind can get a bit fuddled, befuddled and stuff like that. But other than that, like, all around, I need to play with her again she is just a fun character to play with. She's a nice little spice of life to add to your table whenever you're, like, trying to fill that fourth spot. The masp? I think that everything's been said at this point. I think Urshle is very, very good. I, I, I like that, like, Cool Cat and Phone Box were not afraid to kind of go into, like, obvious but weird category whether it's the tail forfeit whether it's her wings being huge personality i i i really like i really like her like i think she's just really interesting i don't really have a lot else to add i think she's a good addition to the game i think she's a good contrast to moon and like other characters that are like kind of like weird out by their sexuality i think that it's a i think she's a good character i'm just really interested to see you know, what else uh, you know, happens with her? In, in the that's past, it. with these with these two creators, sorry, were you saying something? Nope, that's it. In the in the past, when I've uh, comment, uh, commented on on the work of of these two creators, often I'm just like, yeah, phone box, slam dunk, perfect art, and I I, I lay I lay into Cool Cat's writing a little harder, and surprisingly, this is kind of flipping the script. I don't have much to comment about her art or, or, or her writing. I mean, I think her writing was generally pretty good. A couple of years ago, I, I ran one of the uh, Spinati like character trait alignment chart uh, polls, where bas- people basically voted on like uh, characters, you know, personality traits, and I plotted them all on a spectrum. I could, I could send that to solitaire in editing if he wants to post that it's years ago so a lot of characters are missing now but she or a lot of them ended up on this like band as you might expect sort of the line of best fit where you're either really lewd and snarky or you're really wholesome and kind and the other two corners where you're kind of prude and snarky or very like wholesome wholesome and lewd sort of or like, you know, very happy and very kind, but also lewd, were not as explored as much. And I think Arushale hits hits that um hits that underexplored. Yeah, piece. I think she's very wholesome lewd, which is mm-hmm. very good. Very, she, very good. She, she's wholesome, but she's also lewd. And she's really excited about it. But yeah. she's not like a bitch. No, she's she's great. She's very she's nice. Not like a folder. Which is unique and different. Hashtag, hashtag Maya in in prude but snarky. Oh, she shouldn't really be snarky. That was it's kind of old old lines, old writing. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. 
So I, I think uh, Arush Chalet has a lot of potential uh, in terms of writing as long as he just keeps it up because of, of that, you know, you're, you're, you're slotting into that, um, into that relatively empty space. Hashtag sticking a, a, a tail up your snatch. Um, <laughs> so remember, I like was so hyped when I saw that. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, let's fucking go. There's, but there's a lot, even though her, her art is good overall, there's a lot of little things that bothered me. And I, I'm glad that they're looking into them. For instance, uh, when she bends her arms fully, there's no visible elbows or there barely are. You can kind of see it in, in this that I posted with like her, her gauntlets going so far up that it almost looks like they're cut off and they're not really connected at, to anything because mm-hmm. there's no elbow. So that kind of got to me. Um, so, that, yeah, the arms kind of look cut off. Her, her hairline seems kind of weird. Speaking of balding, like with, with Hilbert, the way her, yeah. her hairline just kind of like dips back and then, and then like returns to the front. They used a really weird reference. Maybe Solitaire can find it. I don't have it on hand, but it kind of gave that impression, but I don't think it was... I think they were following it a little too closely compared to what it was doing, where her hair was just kind of windswept. Here, it just looks like it's like it just dips back for some random reason. Overall, like her armor and her wings are detailed, but I think they're really limiting in terms of her posing so far. She feels stiff. She's always like looking ahead, like straight ahead. She's not moving around very much. She needs to like blush more. Eye shadow is like really strong. Which I'm not, I'm is she wearing makeup? Is that supposed to be eyeshadow or is that just her being a weird demon? I think it's supposed to be makeup. Uh and there's like aliasing and kind of like line thickness issues. I'm like you can see like in the background with her wings how some of the line thickness doesn't match up. Maybe that's because it's supposed to be in the background, but it just looks kind of off to me. So but the, you know, these are mostly, you know, minor things you can fix. And and once she gets to the forfeit, her, her poses get a lot more dynamic and interesting. So I think it really was the armor and to some extent the wings. Because, you know, once she gets the posing uh, or that forfeit, uh, I wrote in my notes, extreme tail fucking. <laughs> that, was the, that was the main note that I, that I made. Was it uh, all in caps? No, it was not all in caps. It doesn't need nah, to be. Ah, damn. Although I do, I do wonder about, like, uh, sticking it up the front. I mean, that's, that's fine. I guess that works. Me personally, I would have uh, maybe done, like, you know, just like put it up her ass and then like double have, trouble like, it. Have like free reign to like put your hands anywhere up front. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what they did, really. It just seems like making the most of the, of all the real estate. I just noticed something, by the way, in that picture you posted of her forfeit. What's going on with her hand? What about it? Look behind it. What's that's a womb tattoo. Oh, okay, okay. Because it, because it looked like so small on my monitor, I thought that was like another hand glitched in there. I'm like, what? What's going on there? <laughs> no, that's just yeah. my tired eyes. Don't mind me. Uh, here's the womb tattoo by itself. Such a base decision to keep that in. She, she kind of looks like Mercy's face, which makes sense. Same artist, but and same kind of like pseudo 3D reference. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Um. Just change out the hair a bit. Yeah. All right. We all good? Yeah. We all good. All right. So we've, we've covered a Pokemon character. We've covered a demon. Now it's time for someone who engages in the black speech. <laughs> it's, it's Gloria from Pokemon Sword and Shield. The female protagonist. We're back to Pokegirls. Just when you just when you thought the the poke guys were about to to put you know put their, get their foot in the I door, appreciate you know, there's like this called literally Charizard pose. Just just when you think that, you know maybe the poke guys could could gain some ground, instantly get another poke girl. And this one, well, she's definitely not generic because Nord went all fucking in on the oh on my the God. Gloria. I know there's like a canon of her, which is a lot 
like in the gotcha game or whatever, which is a lot more milk toast. But everyone fucking Sword and Shield got announced, just instantly fell in love with this like hard drinking fucking demo man, <laughs> like intense Scottish, grim, bloody, fabled fucking slag. Just just talking about the ah oh, the, the the head full of eyeballs. <laughs> That's all. That's all I picture for is just talking like the the demo man from Team Fortress Two. This is an open mic night. I'm not going to try to do a, a terrible Scottish accent. <laughs> she she herself has a terrible Scottish accent. What does it say about uh, Spinatti and its representation when the the main Scottish character is written by someone from Northern Ireland? But Tebow, what did you think of Gloria? That and by that I mean you know however much of her dialogue you could actually read. Um, well, I was on the bandwagon of that whole fanon thing when uh, she was first announced and all that. Even though, like I said, I don't know a lot of Pokemon, I still, it was un- it was unavoidable, the memes of her. Um, it was everywhere when it was announced, and rightfully so, because the uh, personally, I always loved the Scottish accent. I, I always thought it was amazing. And I love the fact that, like, you can find them not only talking in the accent, but oftentimes they write in their accent too, just like how Gloria's dialogues in the accent. But like, I, I, I just loved it. When I, when I first saw Nord post a screenshot with it, I'm like, is that just how she's going to talk? Cause please tell me this isn't like a one-off joke you're making. And he's like, no, this is, this is going to be Gloria. And I'm like, yes, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm stoked. I'm going to laugh my ass off. And that I did. Because he he got it perfect to the point where I can hear it in my head, and like I can I can hear the the changed words and the slang and stuff. But it's not to the point that I'm not completely like stunned at what she's saying. Like I'm not sitting there unable to understand it. There's a few lines where I'll sit there and I'll be like, um, I don't quite get where it's going, but most of the time I can get the general gist of it, which is a, a good in between, I'd say, for what they're trying to do. So, like with, as you said, with Pokemon Pro Tags, it's kind of like an open book. It's kind of like a, uh, just a blank, almost, not quite blank slate, but a very, a very empty slate to work with. And I will say that a lot of times in Pokemon Pro Tags, it kind of shows a bit there that there was a bland start to what the character they're trying to build off of is. Gloria, I see a whole personality. I see a lot of actual character, and I think that comes from the fanon that it was kind of based off of. But it's just like I sat there and I, I saw so much more out of her than most other Poke Pro Tags that I've played with. And that's not putting down the others, that's more putting Gloria up a bit. Um... The other thing is, and Nord even messaged me, like, Nord and I talked a lot about it, but like, <sighs> Gloria's horny talk is top notch as well. I know I said in the last cast that Mary's was really good. Gloria's was really good too, because um, Nord kind of let his, uh, like, let his filter go a bit. He wasn't as worried this time. And it, it shows. There, there's, some, there's some really good stuff in there. Then, uh, and obviously, like I said, Mary earlier, it's kind of hard to compare to that because I really like Mary's stuff for some reason, but Gloria is just also made me sit there and go, hmm, hmm, that, that's good. That's a good stuff right there. Um, but yeah, like that, that's my main thoughts on Gloria. Just overall, one of the most vibrant Pokemon Pro Tags we have for sure. I agree with that. I think she's very vibrant. I think she's very on topic and generally very interesting. I, I think leaning into the accent can be a little much, not from a standpoint of like, this is bad, but just in the sense of like, it can, like, if you make your character built around this conceit and then people target your character based around that conceit, it's kind of like, well, you played yourself, which is my only real criticism is like, look, Gloria has a, has a personality and that's great. But I also think that like, because of the accent, it becomes very, easy to focus on the accent over the other characteristics of the character. I kind of maintain that Rosa is my favorite um, Pokemon character. My second favorite Pokemon character is Moon, because I think Moon is very interesting from like a technical standpoint. I think 
figuring out what makes Gloria tick, and this is kind of just general advice for like Pokemon protagonist characters, is like targeting the living shit out of every other character on the roster. Like not all of them per se, but the ones that you as a writer find interesting to provoke conversation will save you a lot of effort, right? Like I, I don't know. Like if if Gloria targets you know, character X and character Y about X, Y, Z things. And then those characters respond back. It's, it's a little easier to have like a more concrete conversation. I I think, I think she's good. I think she's overall, she's good. She's just kind of not for me and and that's okay. I would like to see, you know, just, I'd like to see more of her personality or her history emerge as a result of her dialogue. That's all. That's all really. I feel like I owe it to this cast to at least do like a dramatic reading of, of one Gloria line. I was, I was looking, I was looking for a decent one here. It's, it's a response to Fina's dating prompt. Apparently, if you want to go for the straightforward approach, just say in simple terms, "Hey, pal, I'm in desperate need of someone to rearrange my downstairs. Can't see a go." <laughs> Funny. There you go. It's all you get. I don't know if that sounded more Irish or what. <laughs> what when, when, when will Cypher return to us? Here's, here's, here's the thing. Here, don't, don't tell Nord. But, uh, Irish and, and Scottish. It's like Coke and Pepsi. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Oof. Oh, boy. Everyone hated that. You can't even taste the difference. So, yeah. Nord has expressed interest in, like... This is supposed to be a legitimate character. Like, it's a joke that, haha, funny, she has such a strong accent, but she is supposed to be, like, a, a real person. Which, I don't know how, how much mileage you're going to get out of the casual player to take her seriously but with, with that accent, but I admire you for trying. And he, and he, and he does really want to explore, like, having, you know, legitimate interests and hopes and dreams and things she likes. And and sexuality, she does have really good sexuality. She's she's pretty frank about that. She's just like, yeah, I'll I'll with the last, I'll plop my arse onto her face. Let's see, let's see, expressiveness. Her expressiveness, I felt, did not match her dialogue. So obviously, her dialogue is extremely <laughs> expressive, uh, uh, full of character in the in the way she speaks. And I think the exp- it kind of doesn't match, like. Her her posing is very straightforward. She looks like like if someone wrote the the more bland kind of generic nice happy canon version of Gloria. This is the posing I would expect. <laughs> you know, there's never a moment where she's like leaning forward and kind of leering at you with, with one eye closed and she like she's half in the bag or something. That's the kind of uh, posing I'd expect if if. She was going really hard on this accent. I guess it is kind of funny in a way to <laughs> hear this complete fucking nonsense coming out of like just this totally straight faced uh, character. Like this is just how she talks every day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a little I don't know. I feel like you know visually you want to go all the way too, unless you're really looking for that for that uh, contrast. Yeah, more more poses where she's just got an open mouth in general. I'd say. Which, I mean, she's got a fair amount of them. But, I don't know, just, I just felt like there weren't enough. Hmm, is this one? Yeah, like, maybe this is a good example. Anyway, that's, uh, her hair seemed a little bit weird. There's, like, inconsistent, again, it's kind of like the line thickness with Arushle's wings. It's kind of like inconsistent line strength, the boldness of the outlines. I will say he did a really nice job writing wise uh, for like making it still readable. The joke is fully there. She's fully online with the accent, but you can still tell what she's saying. And she's, and she's got like really good, like dirty talk too, really good sexuality. He's playing into that. She's properly breathless during the forfeit. She actually gets into it as, uh, as opposed to a lot of characters that are, way too well-spoken for someone that's apparently masturbating. Last couple things on art is that forfeit-wise, even though the writing was good, she, she, she was always flipping between like kneeling and sitting down. 
personally, I just I just get rid of kneeling completely. I think kneeling poses are just bad. There's not a lot you can do with them. It's especially bad when you keep flipping between kneeling and sitting, because it's like, what, what are they getting up and sitting back down constantly? It's you know, it's it's jerky. The server already had a big argument about her one pierced nipple. Personally, I'm not a fan. I don't like piercings in general. You'll you'll notice I think that's that. fine. I think it's like it's. Think you'll it's notice fine. that none of my characters have any piercings, even a few that uh, you could maybe see realistically having some. But it's it's no bueno. All right. I I learned from Chernobyl. I don't want to be tasting metal. And one last thing about her her finishing pose, at least the, at least the sitting one. A couple of nice touches on it. You can see sort of like a little bit of the juice flying off and, and pulling up uh, near her crotch. And then also he, he removed the chin outline and shaded it so it kind of looked like she's looking up. Nice touches on that. Nice art overall. Really, really polished character. And I'm excited to see where she goes. She's, uh, she's pretty fun. I like her. Her game sucks, but I like her. <laughs> I'm, l- listen, I'm, 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 I don't want to like shit on things people like, but... <laughs> When you when your when your game is an example of just like naked laziness of just like oh, let's just remove half the fucking content. I think it's fucking open season. I mean, valid. Again, I know nothing on the game, so you rip on it all you want. I won't stop you. Like nothing the game will ever do will will get a, will redeem it in my eyes because it's like you just removed shit. <laughs> It, they, they keep talking about, you know, you, you search up Pokemon and it's like, oh, fucking Sword and Shield, the new generation, the, the eighth generation. I guess it's not new anymore because of the next one. But it's like, oh, how to do such and such in Sword and Shield. It's like, stop treating this like this is normal. You fucking they took like 20 steps back and just took shit out. Anyway, that's my rant for this podcast. It's a good rant. Whatever. All right. I believe that, yeah, okay, it took us a whole, like, hour to get through three characters. <laughs> <guess we're> <laughs> kind of but some, uh, some quick plugs for the character editor changes. Things are happening in the land of Spinati, and not all of them are rotten. Uh, character editor changes. Uh, Nord, also responsible for some, some nifty little coding stuff, some metadata. Um, there's a field to add in, like, the character's pronunciation. How do you, how do you pronounce their name? So I won't mangle Arushale in the future. There's like other notes where you can like post like an extended description for for um, other writers to read, so they actually have an idea of how to target your character, and not just be like, "Wow, those are some nice blue jeans." Oh yeah, people can probably put their targeting guides there. My friend Dylan also wears blue jeans. He's a real asshole. Uh, other stuff. Let's see. Oh yes, uh, also also in the works. Um, epilogue conditions. I, I, I've lobbied hard for this as, as, as one of Spinati's senators and uh, as one of its elder statesmen at this point. And uh, epilogues will soon be changed. Pretty sure the grace period is underway for just the, the default condition to be just completing the game instead of winning. That way you don't have to fucking grind RNG and treat it like it's this uber important reward that the, that the game has like no other purpose except to grind those out. And we're, we're considering some other changes as well. Do you have any thoughts on any of these, any of these updates? Not deep, not deep ones. I think, I think like, I think the pronunciation guy is good. I think like the character age is kind of a miss. Like it's, it's, it's sort of like all the characters should be above 18. Oh, yeah, and I that's, about that one. Yeah. All the characters should be above 18. And that's kind of the extent to which you should do it. It's like, I think putting an age field on there so it begs the question, to be honest. It's like, why did you feel the need to put this here versus like, oh yeah, of course they're all, you know, adults. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it gives well, me GBs. It's, it's, all of these are only in metadata. They're only in the character editor. They're not in the game. The, uh, the point yeah. is just to be yeah. a writing aid. Yeah, if, that, if that's the case, then that's fine. No big deal. Yeah. Age, age was another field, uh, mostly to help me, because I... Because we're tired of everyone being like, wow, why are your girls 40? Stand on. Because I wrote them bad, that's why. Uh, and, and didn't rewatch the source material. Um, 
But yeah, like I, I just think it's a legitimately good thing to know. I think about it's a useful character. in regards to like only in terms of like how you write it. In terms of how you want to address them. Because you think about like in your daily life, even you know, when you're when you're twenty years old, if even a few years separate you from someone else, like someone who's twenty four seems really old. So you're gonna address them totally differently from someone who's eighteen. And I just think that really helps add realism. One thing I didn't even think of, oh, voice crack. One thing I didn't even think of until uh, you pointed out the other notes section that that would be a perfect place for a lot of devs to put those tarting guides that everyone makes for in their uh, dev channel. That's what the whole purpose is. Listen, listen, I'm not bright. <laughs> One of my best characters is Misfortune, aka a literal dumbass. Two of my upcoming want to make characters is Scott from Monster Prom and Beowulf from Skullgirls, aka both absolute dumbasses. There's a reason I'm good at writing dumbasses. <laughs> hey, it, it takes it takes a lot of smarts to write someone dumb. <laughs> Because when you're when you're dumb, you write characters that are smart, and they're not smart in any intelligent way. They're just like magic. They can just like look at a computer and disassemble it in five seconds or whatever. Yeah. Like, because when you're dumb, smart people are just like magic. <laughs> they don't have any self doubt or like they just like instantly know how to do things. Just snap of a finger and something's fixed. Anyway. Or yeah, I guess we can we can quickly run through Q and A for you know as long as we feel like going for. Yeah, let's go. Sounds good. Yeah, to me. let's let's not we there we got a lot of questions. I don't think we're trying to make this into a full episode. Uh, we're approaching an hour already, so I don't think we need to give like super in depth answers. But just you know whatever whatever tickles you. So let's start off. Uh, how do you feel about collectibles that enable new content? Uh, for example, Cagliostro giving you a collar to wear. Uh, I'm not sure. Do they mean wearable collectibles or actual content? I unlocking? think there's like, like the ability to flag if you're wearing certain collectibles. Yeah, with Cagliostro, if you wear that wearable collector, well, the collar, it enables much more of like the type of dialogue you would think from a collar. <laughs> the, it gives more of her domineering, like, oh, wow, you actually put it on type of deal and just really, really digging into you and like the kind of pet play sub mo- sub dom way that kind of stuff i think that's what they're asking is like collectibles that enable new lines and stuff yeah i mean i think i think it's it's good in the sense that like you're not like inadvertently putting people in a corner that they don't want to be in i think player choice tends to be pretty good um i i do think that it's like it begs the question of like if if oh, if I don't want to see Cagliostro's like very hard Dom lines, I just don't wear this. Why don't other characters let me avoid you know X Y Z condition by just making it a collectible? It's like that's that's kind of always the place I go back to. I think it's a good thing. Like, I don't think it's bad or difficult mm-hmm. or wrong. It's just kind of like eh, you know, someone's gonna bitch about this, and I, I don't feel like being responsive to it. That's I'm, all. I'm gonna bitch about it. <laughs> Okay, go for it. Bitch away. I don't know. I don't hate collectibles. I just haven't engaged with them much because most of it just feels like RNG, which is not something I want to encourage. And it just kind collectibles of turns... are ones that encourage you to go after certain like interactions that are non obvious. I don't know. I think I think it just like it funnels players into a certain mindset of just like checking off the boxes. And that's, that's yeah, fair, fair enough. Not what the game is. That's not yeah, what fair. I want it to be. But I mean, it, it can be useful. I I just and I, it's like commit to a, a certain portrayal, you know. I think that's probably fair. I think I tend to agree with that. But like, it's fine. Like, this is what people want. Like, it's it's harmless enough. Really, the original sin was epilogues. But I mean, I mean, it's something I need to personally explore with my characters more in terms of like. Yeah, I, maybe I'd have like a, a warmer opinion of it if I explored more of it myself. But I just ha- don't really have any ideas, and it's not something that particularly interests me. Like I just want the character. Like just keep it simple. Yeah. My my biggest takeaway from it is um, 
in the end, the way I look at it is it's a much better way to go about things than like, and like character memory via markers and stuff. It's my my like the thing I want to see it used for most is kind of like a smaller version of what uh, Nami does with New Game Plus. I think that's where a collectible could kind of shine that with like that kind of deal where it does unlock more content, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a niche. It doesn't necessarily need to be a kink. It could just be like Nami has a new game plus and just some additional lines that do point that kind of stuff out, which I think that'd be a nice little way to keep it tame in a way. I feel so jealous of like new game plus and how she can like kind of, she can, she can be so eager to please the player because obviously that's popular and to, to do that with my characters would be betraying them pretty harshly. So <laughs> it's, it's just something that some characters get to do and some don't, you know, oh, yeah. like, you know, they, they can be into you, but they're going to make you work for it a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. Next question. All right. What are some characters you consider to be really good at hitting a specific niche? Doesn't have to be a niche you personally like. Personally, personally, uh, I, I don't know. She's been jumping on and off of the of online. I don't know which state she's currently in, but uh, Nagamimi. She hits that gremlin niche perfectly. Um, I mean, I guess that's not specific, really, because we have quite a few of them. But it's a bias of mine. She's one. Of, she's one of, if not the best, of like the smug, in your face gremlin personality, and. Uh, like this is coming from someone who knew nothing of what she, who she was, what she was from. I didn't even know what her game was when I was playing her. I I had no clue, but I played with her and I was like, "Hot damn, this is fucking great!" Like I sat there, I was like, "Holy shit!" So like, I think she's probably one of the best at hitting the gremlin niche, like the super smug gremlin niche of Spinati. I need, I need to think a bit about this for a minute, Spinal. Why don't you give your opinion, and then I'll go go through mine. I, I think, like, my, off, off the top of my head, um, Nagisa is a good choice. I'm not really big into, like, ENF stuff, but I think Nag- Nagisa does that really well. Nagisa is cute. Uh, well, yeah, on the math, I contradicted you last time, so let me let me go ahead and, and jerk you off a little bit here, because I think Thanks. you, you in general, <laughs> your projects, you do a pretty good job hitting a specific niche. Thank maybe, you. Maybe it's maybe it's because of like your your turbocharged dev style where you just vomit out six hundred lines in one go. God, this in, still blew my mind. in one state of mind, but you just you you tend to like just go in. You just go like you, you throw your whole uh, effort into into whatever niche you want to take or whatever like pairing. <laughs> you just like you you just, you just fill Hu Tao's womb up with like a thousand. <laughs> Horny Leon lies. It, it, it helps <laughs> that I live. I live with Hu Tao's author, and it's uh, it, it, it is non prohibitively difficult to do that. You know, it, it's like a you could you could call it like stereotypical or something, but like this, you know, su- sucrose. You know, you know, shy, secretly lewd scientist girl. Like, got it, got it. I know what I'm gonna get. Thank from you. This character. And and she does it well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I tend to go for more like of like a generalist thing, which I guess is weird to say when Revy is so polarizing. <laughs> but just to, I, mean, yeah. I, I think like I think like Ayano is a good example of this too, where it's just like if you want Ayano to like fuck your life up, that character is there for you. But I'm just like, I don't really want this. So I, I think that's another good one. Uh, I'm just kind of scrolling up from the bottom of the roster and kind of seeing what picks my eye up right now. Um uh, Talking good on each other's characters, I will say another like niche one. Then you just mentioned it was Revy. Like, for we don't have a lot of like true mean girls, in my opinion. Like, we don't have a lot of like the snarky that type of deal. And I, I really like that in Revy. Uh, I, I, you should update Revy more. Re- Re- Revy is a Revy is a sweet muffin. I did. Enjoy, I, I need to get back to when I get back to Fate. I want to do some more interaction between Fate and Ravi because those were looking fun, and then we it kind of didn't go too far. I, I think Haru is also kind of in the same vein. Like, I think Haru is good for what she does. 
I don't know. Like, I, like I, I, you have to really, really go down the roster to find a bad character, but I don't think there's anything here that's like ex- exceptionally good. I think like if you're like into Twinks, like Ignatz is really good. So that's that's another good one where I'm like, yeah, I don't really get it, but you you do you, man. I don't know. It's a hard question. They're all they're all there's like a bunch of good options here. Okay. Speaking of hitting a niche, any tips or perspectives on writing horny slash sexual content? Um uh write write horny. Write horny. This is from Vision. He talks about writing for Mari. He he him he himself uh spoke a bit a bit about um focusing on sensations or a specific sense. I, I don't think I write really good horny dialogue, so I, you know, don't have a lot of advice. I guess just say, like, the, the trick is, like, figure out what you want and then ask for it. Like, I, I don't know. Like, that's kind of the extent that I've got from it. I, I think, yeah, like what you said, write, write while horny. Like, write something that you personally want to hear or want to read. Because if you don't like it, how can you expect anyone else to like it? Yeah, that, that's like basically what I had. Like, uh, one, one thing I recently thought of is kind of put yourself in both positions uh, of it. Like, how would you how would you feel receiving like those kinds of flirts, that kind of horny talk? And like, would it be something you could say in that situation? Like, you yourself would say now. Maybe if you're a shy person, you want it, but still, you get the idea. That doesn't make sense on both ends of the situation. I know that's a lot more analytical than horny dialogue should really be, but it's one thing that has helped me a little bit. And it helps you avoid the, like, going way too far. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Just cut loose. Just go all the way, and if it's too far, you can, you can tone it back later. But Yeah. I will say my cutting loose gave Ari a bit of worrisome dialogue in certain I, things. I mean, I, I really like Ari. It's kind of like if if you're super well, horny, well, her, her lines active. were just too long. Yeah, well, that was my I, main problem with them. Yeah, no, and there was talk in the server a bit back with like some of her lines are very like getting close to consenty. I mean, I I don't know if you if you're, I, I have complex thoughts on that. I'm also just like I think like as long as you're not like forcing people into a position they don't want to be. It's one thing if your character is like, aha, I'm going to do this to you. And then it's another of like you're impl- yeah I don't know it, it's complicated I think that it's good to get feedback from the server on that I also think that it's like it's okay to entertain some of that um, I don't know like people who are listening if you want to comment on sexual writing that the people on the podcast have done well go ahead I, I think for me the thing is like with writing like a lot of dudes that are into women is like it's it's just kind of a niche that's missing. I don't know really who's there to read that per se, but it seems like a thing that does really well. So go for it. I, I've I don't I've spent I don't even know how long you know revising Maya's like masturbation dialogue in recent months, and I'm I'm so eager for to get any kind of feedback. I not not to like say I'm I'm entitled to like. You know, feedback and plays or whatever, but I think a lot of people just like, yeah, I know what Maya's deal is. I don't, I don't need to constantly play her, and it's like, I, I do feel like it really changed a lot of her, a lot of her texture and a lot of how she talks. And I wish I could get some more of that, see if I'm heading in the right direction, because I tried to like be pretty overt and uh, and and go pretty hard on the dirty talk. I want to know if it landed. Uh, if you if you really want, um. Like to, to bring that out more because I do know like the overtime reworking things can go under the radar. I'd recommend like I, I'm not sure if you really use the subreddit often, but even just putting a kind of thing like saying a lot of her lines have been changed. It might really help because as you just said, a lot of people might not realize how much has been changed yet. Well, I, I'd expect I, I'd probably pair that more with like an art update. True, that is very because that'll get people to play anyway. That's very. That's very true. We'll see. I I just meant from devs. It'd be it'd be mm-hmm. nice to know if it was a. That, that's a sad truth as well. A total miscalculation or not? Yeah, that, that's a sad truth as well. With like once a character hits main, it, the the feedback does sadly dwindle because especially with how big the testing roster is as of late, a lot of people focus more on feed, giving feedback to the testing people and main well, kind of. 
chuckles. Especially when when you've been around for like four and a half years as a character, <laughs> like people's impressions of you are pretty well formed. That's fair. That's so fair. It, it would I've, take. It I've would... I've been in this game longer than I've had a lot of my employment. So, like, I think this <laughs> this this game has lasted a lot longer than my jobs have. So, I feel that. Yeah, like you know, Napsu gets praised for you know the the dirty talk that she does, and you know, and that's because she did it right the first time. You know, <laughs> those those were those were first. Yeah, impressions. Kizuna I renowned for 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 her amazing forfeit. Oh my <laughs> lord, Kizuna, Kizuna. Okay, the first time she actually wrote a forfeit How about that. <laughs> And not just Kizuna I fucking around. Yeah, maybe, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Great first impressions, you know, they matter. Okay. Um, Should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. All right. Are there any characters you think could just do that a bit more? Like they scratch an itch, but they should dig in a bit more to that. I guess this is the opposite of the characters that hit their niche really well. This one's a, was a really hard one for me because I'm hard to be skeptical, and I'm usually like really like just easily pleased. So it was kind of hard for me to find something that didn't quite hit it. But I guess like personal preference, I always liked what one thing I liked about Monica was kind of the fourth wall teasing, like um, and she does it quite a bit already. But I mean, the more the merrier with this, in my opinion. Is like a more talking to you, which uh, like being aware that that's not you she's looking at, and just kind of playing off of that. And, and like I said, Charity does it plenty, does it a lot. But like I guess personal preference, I, I'd love, I'd always love to see more of that. I would say for me, it's like I think Sayori and Zoe are pretty close to that. I think Sayori just fundamentally lacks engagement with the player in a meaningful way and you need to kind of get someone that's like super into that to make it work um zoe is obviously a huge weirdo i i I don't think it's possible to write this character to the extent that you possibly could unless it was like your entire focus but I, i think she's pretty close to being amazing like she's good i think amazing is not too far off Actually, I also think like Senko kind of misses the mark for me on some ways. Sorry, honey. Where it's like Ooh. she doesn't really go as deep into some of like the pampering things as I think she could. Like, I think she's good. Like, I like her. I just think that she's not as detailed as as she could be. I, I give this feedback for characters a lot, so it's hard to pick out anything, any anyone in particular, because there's also a lot of cases where I just disagree with the direction in general. Like a uh, Samus. Like I disagreed with the direction they took, but I can't really say it's categorically a bad one. It's just not what I would have done, and it's not what appeals to me the most. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of coming up empty in terms of like uh, maybe like Cauliflower. She has a lot of potential for being like an alien. I don't know. I I like the 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 through alien eyes perspective, as you might as you might tell. We still need an android girl in general. Just any kind of robot. All the projects die tragically. Much like their main characters. Sometimes even in source material. Yeah. Isn't there um two Mega Man characters in the works? I mean, allegedly. I don't know, man. You, you'd have to tell me. I mean, I, I, I know someone personally that's working on Ale. And then there was someone who made that... Other mega, it, it was a renewed person that just showed up in the server one day, and like posted an insanely like source accurate. Oh model. yeah, it was it was CL. It was CL from Mega Man Zero. Yeah, but she's a human. Oh, that is a human. Wow, that's actually yeah, kind of surprising. She's fully human. Oh wow, that that's weird with the way that art looked. But like when I first, nonetheless, when I. When I first saw oh, it, wow, that's it incredibly impressive. Yeah, I thought that was just two pictures from Source. No, that, that's side not by even side. that's not even the, the the most recent version. There's like better there, shading. Shit. There's better shading. Holy shit! Holy fuck, dude! I, I think yeah, like you good. kind of run the risk of like the model looking a little, a little sus, but I think like the direction on that is like very impressive. Oh my god! I mm-hmm. completely I completely disagree. Just go balls to the wall, one to one. Fuck it. 
Uh, <laughs> fuck fuck uh, Kisuke, fuck Pochi. My final <laughs> message, change the world. As kind of like an ex-moderator, I'm like, this is like the impetus of like why a certain creator is very upset with, with the community as a whole. And it's like, yes, you can do source accurate. The problem is if your source accurate reads a certain demographic to the lay audience, you need to fix it. Listen, if you're, if you're, if you're source accurate, you never have to update their art. You got to write the I mean, you never have to update your, their art, but I think you need to augment it at, on the, on the outset or else it's just like a non-starter. Anyway. And there's the work in progress ale as well. Yeah, base is pretty good. Um, I'd love to see her, man. Um, cool. Let's see. All right, all right. Moving on. If you could pick one thing to add to the to Spinati's UI, what would it be? It would be a live Mayo reaction. Uh, <laughs> I, I think like if it like highlighted like who, which two characters are actually targeting each other with like a, another color for like an ancillary line. I think that would be fine. I I don't like the idea of like mouse over text. I think that would probably be good of just like so and so is responding to so and so. My uh, biggest thing is that character selection UI change that Zeus had for the longest time. Um, don't know where it went. Like I, I know he said it's been on the back line, but uh, that was looking really slick. The whole like menu overhaul type deal. Okay. What do you like to see in an inbound targeted line? Uh, g- genuine, non-superficial interest. Clear evidence. Clear evidence that they actually read the targeting guide and avoided like just the most generic, boring first question they thought of. There's a lot of there, there's a lot of what not to do. I'd say something that not only sparks your interest as the care as the uh, author, but also that would spark. Uh, your character's interest, like something that would make them want to continue the conversation. Yeah. Just, just like not the same thing that everybody else says. Or like, hey. ask, a, ask a question that both characters are going to be interested in. Hey, Nami, nice like climactic. The, the, climate, the climate act. Climate act, yeah. What a, a, yes. there's, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of, like, don't, the worst target is one where it's not like the, the character really cares. It's that you as a writer don't know who, what this character is. So you just write the first thing you think of. And they just ask like a really boring question with an easy answer. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh. So the whole conversation is just like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's this. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the yeah. worst way. Like, it I, guess cuts that's get... that, I guess that's what that was. Yeah, I guess that's the worst when it gets cut, like, on your second, like, on the second part of the dialogue. You're like, shit, where do I end? Like, how do I get one more line? And yeah, that's, that's the worst part. I, I think that's, like, there's, like, two really strong options for, like, target lines in general. It's something that's, like, interesting of, like, oh, this is cool. Like, your character wants to know about this thing about my character. You know, no matter what that thing is, right? Like, I, I don't... I, I'm I I don't really care if your character's like oh my god Adrian you lost your transformation or oh no Sucrose you're fucking awkward like I think those lines can lead to a lot of interesting discussion I, I also think the second type of line that's really good is like why your character is interested in my character from like a like a sexual standpoint I think is always fascinating because it's like yeah why does why does your character want to bang this one besides like the fact that they have a pulse or not in the case of the zombie <laughs> girls and are there, you know? Twisted like, fake that, out. <laughs> both, both those are fine. Like, it's like, yeah, okay, like, what? what is it? <laughs> yeah, like, if, if all else fails, default to sex. Remember what game you're playing. I you know, bro, right? agree like, with that. Fucking uh, Nico Robin, just be like, damn girl, you have some massive Damn, massive girl, you got permits for that dump truck? I like to upset a fan. I, your, your crew will never drown with those flotation devices. Yeah. And like, and you just got to do it in a, in a way that's interesting. It's, you know, fi- finally for Jura, I could be like, wow, someone who's, ta- who's actually taller and has bigger tits than me. This is a new feeling. Cool. So if you, if each of you could assign one specific writer to one new character of your choice with the guarantee the project would make it to the main game, which writer would you pick for each character? Okay, that's interesting. 
that that requires a lot of thought. I'm going to say me for Maya. Okay, let let's come back to that because I think it's actually a really good question, Tivo. You got an answer for that one? I do actually because I looked over the questions real quick before this started. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a good answer for it, and this seems to be a really inside baseball, personally. But I mean, inside inside baseball is fine. Like, not a big deal. Um. So personally. One of my th- one of my characters I'd really like to see in the game. His name is Seven from a series called Scissor Seven, and he's got a bit of a goofball kind of random personality that I think just kidding could nail. Um, mm. it's not as wacky as like Bobo Bo, but the series is very like self aware, comical, but it has a genuine like serious side to it as well at points. But it's just a it's just a character I could really see just getting nailed out of the park, but I, I don't know if he's even heard of the source or not. <laughs> I, I was about to say, like, I was about to say, like, Seven of Nine or something. And then I remembered, oh, wait, Seven of Nine actually wasn't the fucking game. <laughs> I mean, a, a Star Trek character, any kind of space travel is obviously really good for me to, to interact with. And, and she's pretty much a direct inspiration for, for Maya's character design. So that, them kind of like head to head stoicism just who who can out stone face the other that'd be pretty funny i'm going to avoid upsetting people who are listening to this like at home like yeah. why did you know I, I wonder i bet like phone box could do a good seven i mean phone I, I don't box think i, I think phone anymore. box could do whatever the fuck he wants like honestly <laughs> like i yeah, you, you, but i'd like to two, see that the two people that i think can basically write any character with like zero percent knowledge of that character and know that they're going to turn out well it's like when tally tar is like i'm working on this character i'm like yep they're going to be great phone box yep they're going to be great like a plus no problem i I think regarding like the question at hand i think for the people on the call i think if spinan were to write like i from zombie land saga i think that would turn out really well and i think buddy tebow if you wrote um Ah, shit. Sorry, I, I had this on hand. Give me a second to remember it. <laughs> like it's it's actually it's actually it's actually a good con- it's actually a good concept. So no, sell, sell me on this on this I because uh, I is I, like I hear she's dead. That's not a good start. I I is basically like <laughs> if if Ryuko and Maya had a halfway point that was very dedicated to a cause that was not killing clothes. And had some friends on the roster you could write a lot of target lines to. I think that's the one thing, like, span on you, like, maybe not excelled at, is targeting, like, a lot of people in depth. Not that you haven't done that, but in the sense of, like, because they're franchise mates. Like, you obviously have Jura and Maya targeting each other very deeply. Revy has no franchise mates. Rigo has no franchise mates. I think, like, your take on, like, a franchise mate character with someone who's, like, kind of in your wheelhouse would be really fascinating. You mean, like, multiple franchise mates? Yeah. That sounds excruciating. That are written by other people. I think that sounds interesting, but also really annoying. Well, welcome, welcome to Genshin Impact. Um Buddy Tebow, I think if you wrote your from Spy X Family, we would get a really good your out of the process. That's a series I do need to check out. Yeah. So anyway, those are those are kind of my advice. If you want me to like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and post them like podcast like anyone what character do you think i should write i'll i'll go ahead and post that right now give me a second anyway i do have to go eat dinner you guys are welcome to keep right keep going i would like to go consume food i hope you guys have a wonderful evening thanks for calling we'll put some of the other qas on the next cast i was gonna say i I think we can call it here and if you want to just if you want to finish up some of these questions if you really want to talk about them Next time, episode sixty, we can give him a shot. Cool. I, I think adding some uh, QAs. To I, the guess, end of the- I guess you won't be on, buddy Tebow, but like you're free to like post your own personal answers yeah. to these in the podcast chat, like in text form. Like that's fine. Okay. Cool. All right. I'll talk to you guys like, later. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for this bonus episode. Uh, thanks for coming on tonight. Bonus episode. All right. See you guys next time. Spend your money wise. Good night. Spend your money wisely. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go invest it in in a nice uh, in a nice in a nice, nice bear market we're in, motherfuckers. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Peace. All right. Uh, thanks for coming on. Do you have any final words you'd, or anything you'd like to plug?
Uh, I mean, I plugged Winati last time, and it's going on a short break, so I can't. <laughs> What's happening? No, Winati, I'm putting it on a short break to fix some things, so I can't really uh, plug that right now. <laughs> I mean, you could talk about how it's gone, because I don't think it, was, it, was, it had started when we recorded episode 59. Well, yeah, then uh, it's gone pretty well. Um, gotten a decent bit of watchers that are actually enjoying it. Uh, we've got some decent, like, actual kind of, like, storylines we're working up behind the scenes. Uh, we've got the climax to, like, our little testing phase coming up. Well, it, this will be released afterwards, but coming up this Friday, which would be, like, the 17th, I think. Um, and then we're going. We're just going on a short break, basically, to make all the characters have more unique move sets. Uh, I'm going to be making like an intro to the thing. Just going to be like fine tuning it to make it more fleshed out, more appealing to the viewer. So overall, though, it's been going great. It's been fun. The only thing that sucks is not only am I working with a 2K game, I'm also working with Vegas. So like I'm double whamming myself with Hellscapes. Oh man. Seems it seems like my my girls haven't been involved too much, which which is a shame. But she, I'm glad uh, that, Maya, uh, Maya's in the uh, incoming character list. Don't worry, I have a little list of characters I'm going to add that are like big and spinatti that we don't have in Winati yet, and she's up there. Oh, since. I, oh, I thought she just got booted out. I thought she was she didn't make the cut. Nah, nah, she'll be in there. Don't worry, we'll, we'll see how she does though. <laughs> oh boy, coming in, coming in with the with the people's elbow. Oh yeah, <laughs> people of the jack. Call call this one the the dread run the dread bombing. Hey hey maybe if you want you, you can you can work with me when I make her move set you can help me out. Uh, surprise me. <laughs> All right. All right. Th- thanks for thanks for everybody listening to this this little quick shot a little bit shorter than usual. Just wanted to get it out there. Uh, stay tuned next time for the big six zero more characters. Um, yeah more testing more main roster more of all that good stuff more. Uh, more Q&A. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. Good night and good luck. Peace out. I'd like to chime in here and, and say that um, based on conversations I've had with the writer, it's very clear that they have, they have a lot of like personal lore for him that they have in mind as to like what he's been up to since the... Uh, it, it looks like that, that's actually an older model, I think. Oh, is it really? I haven't updated my uh, game in a minute, actually. Update your game, bitch. You update um, it every couple days. <laughs> anyway, I, I I post my lines every damn day, and and you and I want them spread throughout the Spinati landscape in every corner and every house, in every hay bale and every trough. <laughs> Anyway,